Welcome to the second session of Revision through MCQ series. The purpose of this series is to help you solve some basic questions to give you a revision and concept clarity about the important topics of history. Now, in the second session of this series, we are going to tackle the Vedic age. Now, see the first question, we have to figure out the correct statements. The first statement says that in early Vedic times, the most mentioned river was Ganga. First, you should know that early Vedic time is also called Rig Vedic time because Rig Veda is the only source of information for this age. Now, in Rig Veda, the most mentioned river is not Ganga. The most mentioned river is Sindhu or Indus river. Additional information that we can have here is that another important river in Rig Vedic age was Saraswati. And Saraswati river is mentioned as Naditama or the best of river. So, we are Saraswati river is called Naditama or the best of river. And Sindhu is the most mentioned river in Rig Vedic age. So, the first statement goes wrong. The second statement says that Jinda Vesta gives the information about the Aryan culture. Now, to know about Aryan culture, we have three early literary sources. One is Iranian source, and the Iranian source is Jinda Vesta. One is Indian source, and the Indian source is Rig Veda. Then, the Greek source. To know about Aryan culture is the writing of Homer. There are books like Iliad and Odyssey. They give the information about Aryan culture. Now, see the map and get one additional information here that Aryans in early Vedic time talked about Sapta, Hindu area. Now, what do you mean by Sapta Sindhu? Sapta, seven Sindhu rivers, the land of seven rivers. What were those seven rivers? One was Sindhu, Sindhu was Indus. One was Saraswati. Now, the river bed of Saraswati is dry, but it is believed that it crossed through the areas of Rajasthan and Haryana. Then, five other rivers. What were those? Satlaj was called Sutudri. Bias was called Bipasa. Ravi was called Purushni. Sinab was called Asikini. And Jhelam was called Vitasta. Now, see the second question. It says that which one of the following four Vedas as Purushokta. A super important information is that Rig Veda is divided into so many mandalas, and the tenth mandala, mandala of Rig Veda, has Purushokta. Super important is this mandala because this mandala and the Purushokta basically gives you the information about the Chaturvarna system. Chaturvarna system, categorization of society into four varnas, like Apne Bola Brahmins, Kshatriyas, Vaishya, and Shudra, and Shudra. For the first time, this Chaturvarna system has been mentioned in the Purushukta of Rig Veda. Again, additional information we can have here is that the word Shudra got mentioned for the first time in Vedic literature in this Purushukta of Rig Veda in 10th Mandala. The next question says that Gayatri Mantra was composed by Gayatri Mantra was composed by Rishi Vishwamitra. It is given in the 3rd Mandala. 3rd Mandala of Rig Veda. Now, this is considered a super important mantra 
because it is also considered a way of Arya Nijation. So, what do you mean by the way of Arya Nijation? It is still believed that anyone who would recite Gayatri Mantra would come into the Aryan fold, would come into the Brahmanical fold. So, that time, basically, this mantra gave a way of peaceful way of bringing the people into the fold of Aryan culture. That is why historians they interpret this Gayatri Mantra as a way of peaceful way of Aryanization. The next question says that consider the following statements. First says that Brahmana emphasized on rituals. The second statement says that Upanishads emphasized on philosophy. Now we should know here that Vedic literature is divided into groups like first is the core that is called Samhita. The four basic Vedas, Rig Veda, Sam Veda, Yajur Ved, and Atharva Ved. Now, when you talk about the Samhitas, after them came the Brahmanas. And Brahmanas were like the commentaries on the Samhitas. So basically, they elaborated on the rituals given by the Vedas. And if this is so, the first statement is correct. The Brahmanas, they emphasized on the rituals. After Brahmanas came the Aryankas. Aryankas started showing shift towards philosophy and they explained the philosophy of the rituals. Eventually came the reaction against rituals in the form of Upanishads. The Upanishads showed a strong reaction against the rituals and emphasized on Gyanmar to get salvation. And if this is so, the second statement that Upanishads emphasized on philosophy, this is correct. The next statement says that Sudasa belonged to the tribe of. Now it's very simple to figure out that in Rig Veda, there is mention of a battle that is called the battle of Dasrajana or also called the battle of Dasrajanya. Now it is said that the Bharata king Sudasa was led by the Rishi. Vasisht and he defeated a confederation of the ten kings called the Sirajana, in which five kings were Aryans and five kings were non Aryans. Now, if you talk about no, if you talk about this battle of the Sirajana, this is one of the first descriptions that we get about the political expansion of the Aryans. Now, super important is the term the battle of the Sirajna and that would give you the information of the Bharata king Sudasa. So, answer here would be A. The next question says that in early Vedic times, women could participate in Sabha and Vidatha. Now, again we know that if we read R.S. Sharma or we read Romila Thapa, they say that in early Vedic time, the position of woman was slightly better compared to the later Vedic time. In early Vedic time, we get the reference of some important tribal samitis. Like you talk about Sabha, Vidhata, you also talk about Gana and Samiti. All these terms basically represented tribal type of assemblies. In early Vedic time, there was political inclusion of the women and that would be reflected by the fact that they could participate in the tribal assemblies like Sabha and Vidatha. The first statement is correct. By the later Vedic time, they would start losing this political inclusion and they would lose also the right to participate in Sabha and Vedata. Now, the second statement says that in early Vedic times, king maintained 
a huge standing army. This is incorrect. Look, when you talk about early to late Vedic time, there was a transition from Jana to Janapad. Initially, in early Vedic time, the Aryans were just in the form of Jana or the tribal groups. Certainly, there was neither a very strong economy nor a very strong state like any system. The army was certainly not as strong and certainly not any standing centralized army with the king. So, at the time of the war, the king would get support from some important functionaries like Purohit. The main priest, Tenani. The main commander and Gramani. The head of villages. A super important functionary was Gramani. He was head of villages and at the time of war, he would collect the fighters and would come to support the king. So all the Gramanis, they collected their fighters and they supported the king during the war. And there was no standing army in times of early Vedic times. If this is so, the second statement goes wrong. The next question says that in Vedic times, Pani was. Look, in Vedic times, one of the most important forms of wealth basically was cow. The Aryans were cattle herders. And the most important form of wealth was cattle and cow. Now, we get the reference of two communities in Vedic literature, those who had big number of cows. One of them was Gomat. But very rich, they would be considered because having big number of cows and they were Aryans. But we also get the reference of the word Pani, also having a big number of cows. But the Panis were having big number of cows, but they were non-Aryans. And that is why the Panis would be criticized a lot in Vedic literature. So the Panis basically were non-Aryans having big number of cows. The next question says that in early Vedic times, cow was the most important form of wealth. Just now we have discussed that in early Vedic time, cattle no, was the most important form of wealth. They were Basically, the people were basically cattle herders. Pastoral was the economy. And cow was considered the most important form of wealth among all. So, the first statement is correct. The second statement says that in later Vedic times, importance of agriculture increased. Look, see and just try to understand that the Aryans came to India through northwest and they were constantly migrating towards east. When they migrated towards east, what they got, very good rain would be there in east. Then the soil was alluvial soil, a very fertile soil. In east, they started using more and more iron implements and because of which you will find that agriculture became very important. And if this is so, certainly we can say that in later Vedic times, the importance of agriculture increased. The second statement is correct. Now this question says that in Vedic times, Vrihi represented. Just now we have discussed that by the later Vedic times, the Aryans, they had migrated to east and they had started practicing very good agriculture. So, we also start getting reference of so many grains in Vedic literature like Vrihi represented rice, Godham represented wheat, Ikshu represented sugarcane, sugarcane and Yava represented barley. So, answer here is very simple. Vrihi basically represented rice. Answer here would be D. Now, this question says that in early Vedic literature, there is frequent mention of untouchability. It is incorrect. In early Vedic literature, we do not get any reference of untouchability. 
by the end of early vedic time the one of the last parts of rigveda we have discussed that we get the reference of purushukta but that mentions the chaturvarna system and there is no mention of untouchability in early vedic literature if this is so the first statement goes wrong in the second statement it is said that the later vedic time there was no gotra exogamy so gotra what do you mean by gotra look in vedic times the family members they would put their cows in one place and that is why the term emerged gotra and the people coming from the same gotra they were considered coming from the same family now what was believed that the marriage should be outside this gotra and that is what was called gotra exogamy this gotra exogamy like concept had already emerged in later vedic times and that is why it is incorrect to say that there was no gotra exogamy in later vedic times the next question says that in early vedic times the most important god was vishnu the first statement is wrong in early vedic times the most important god was indra and indra was also called purandar he was also given a vajra in the hand and was called purandar because he was considered a god who would help in breaking the forts aryans were coming towards india and they were capturing more and more areas so indra was considered super important god indra was also considered a super important god because he was the rain god he was also the rain god so in early vedic time the most important god was indra not vishnu first statement is gone second statement says that in later vedic time the most important god was indra the second statement goes wrong because in the later vedic time indra had lost the position and rather in place of indra some other gods they had become important like prajapati prajapati vishnu and rudra so prajapati was the creator vishnu would emerge as protector rudra later would be equated with shiva again if this is so the second statement is definitely wrong that the most important god was indra in later vedic times the next question says that in the context of ancient indian society which one of the following terms does not belong to the category of other three it's very simple to figure out here that kula represented family vamsha was connected with family gotra was again connected with family but godhum is odd one out just now we have seen that the basic meaning of godhum it represented the grain of wheat if this is so we have to figure out the odd one out c would be the answer godhum one more question the term aryan denotes now most of the historians they hardly believe that the aryans basically represented a race most of the historians like romila thapar upender singh r s sharma they all believe that the aryans basically represent the people coming from the linguistic group in which the people they would be speaking the language is coming from the same family so basically the term aryan represents a speech or a linguistic group c would be the answer next question says that which one of the following four vedas contains an account of magical charm and spells it's very interesting to figure out that atharva veda was written by muni atharva and this atharva veda has also given the idea of so many non aryan traditions like the magic and the charms to keep off the evil spirit or to keep off removing the diseases and so many other troubles so one veda that also gives the 
idea of non aryan tradition is a tharva veda answer here would be c one more question is that which of which of the following vedas would not be considered as part of traya veda again it's very simple to figure out that a tharva veda was written by a non aryan non aryan rishi atharva just now we discussed that atharva was the non aryan rishi he wrote atharva veda that is why atharva veda is not included into the category of traya veda rig veda yajur ved and samved they are considered part of the traya veda so which is not considered part of traya veda the answer is very simple the atharva veda Now the next question says that dharma and rita depict a central idea of ancient vedic civilization of india in this context consider following statements what was dharma and what was rita if you want to solve this question and any such question of this type it's very simple to figure out that in ancient india the concept of dharma was very secular basically it represented duty the duty of a person would be considered dharma and what was rita the universal law no the universal the universal law that would guide everything in universe would be considered rita now if we talk about the first statement that dharma was conception of obligation and of the discharge of one's duties to one's self and to others first statement is correct second rita was the fundamental moral law governing functioning of the universe again the universal law it is and rita is universal law the second statement is correct now the next question is then very easy this says that in vedic literature the god who maintained the cosmic order look varuna was called rita janasya the protector of rita so what was rita cosmic order and if varuna would be considered rita janasya then the answer here is very simple it would be a varuna The next question says that the religion of early Vedic Aryan was primarily of. We have to understand here that when you talk about the early Vedic Aryan, what was their religious style? First of all, they would basically worship different aspects of nature. Indra represented rain. No, Agni would be worshipped. Varuna was personification of water. So basically, first they worshipped different aspects of nature. and at the same time they would perform yagyas to get more and more merits punya and if this is so it's very simple to figure out that the religious pattern in early vedic time can be defined in the form of worship of nature and yagyas c would be the answer another way of getting the answer here is to figure out that image worship we do not get the evidence of image worship in vedic age it emerged much later b is gone again bhakti movement would emerge much later in brahmanical and hindu system so again if you eliminate d and a again you would be able to get the answer c worship of nature and yagyas additional information that we can have here is that early vedic time the religion was very materialistic what the people demanded just two things praja and pashu praja more sons pashu more cattle so basically the religion was initially in early vedic time very materialistic now see here if you talk about the next question the national motto of india the meva jayate inscribed below the emblem of india has been taken from so where we have got this satya meva jayate super important fact when you talk about mundaka upanishad that has given us the emblem 
satyamevajayate. Additional information, Kat Upanishad gives the story of Nachiketa, Nachiketa and Yam. Who is Yam? The God of Death, Yamraj. Tanugya Upanishad gives the first reference of the word Krishna. Then Sweta Swetara Upanishad gives the first reference of Shiva. Additional information we can have. Answer here would be D. Mundaka Upanishad. The next question says that which of the following social groups was excluded from Dvija category? Look, the Brahmins, Kshatriyas, Vaishya, they were considered Dvija and they had the right to go for Upanayana. Upanayana ceremony. What was Upanayana ceremony? Basically, this was sacred thread ceremony. After the sacred thread or Upanayana ceremony would start the Vedic education. Now, education, the start of education is always considered the second birth. So, twice born, Dvi, Ja, Doba, Jiska, Janma, Hua, Ho. That is why the Brahmins, Kshatriya and Vaishya, they were considered part of the Dvija category. So, the social group that was excluded from Dvija category, it was that of Sutras. Now, this is what I wanted to discuss with you in the second session of Revision through MCQs. Very soon I would be there with you with the third session of that of the rise of Mahajanpadas and the age of Buddhism and Jainism. Thank you so much.